Alright, I am starting to get a bit tired because I my sleep hours are terrible, but uh, I'm going to power through and try and film another episode. So we are now going to head off to the Shiver Peaks to try and make contact with Bram, get him to join Dragon's Watch, and then together we'll go see if we can find a sample of, an, well, an ice brood sample that's been absorbing some of this Mordrobot and Zaitan magic, if they've been doing the same thing as the destroyers have been doing. So let's have a look. Is Dragon Bash still on? Is that a Holbrack thing? Holbrack could be looking very different. And very spoilery. Possibly. Oh no, I think it's looking normal. But no, I think, um... Because, uh, I mean, long story short, Dragon Bash, because they updated based on, uh, events that happen with dragons. And there are people talking and, uh, seeing and showing things about very spoilery stuff in the story. So it would be interesting if that was all on display here while I was just running around. I think Dragon Bash just finished up. Maybe. Or maybe it's a different city. I don't know. I'm talking to the shaman here. Greetings, Dragon Slayer. What brings you to Holbrook this fine day? I'm seeking information on Jormag's minions, and also looking for Bram Erson. Have you heard any reports of Ice Brood that don't fit the expected description? As a matter of fact, we have. We've heard word from the far north of a corrupted creature unlike any we've seen before. But we don't advise traveling to the frozen wastes. Everyone who does either disappears or returns as Fawnir. We've lost too many. Lost because they went up there without shipping the toothpaste. What's the significance of the tooth? Our most legendary ancestor, Aesgeard Dragonmender, knocked out Jormag's fang and founded Holbrek around it. How are you doing? Once someone damages the fang, we'll know it's time to take back what Jormag stole. My comrade Timey and I are working on a theory that could allow us to fell Jormag without... Hello again. It's good to see you in Holbrek. Jormag had better watch out then. <laughs> it's not certain yet, and I could use some help. Do you know where Bram is? And Rox, is she here? Rox left with Garm yesterday to catch up with Bram. Bram has gone to the far north in search of a lost magical scroll he plans to use on Air's bow. That sounds like a fitting way to honor his mother. There is no more dangerous area in the Shiver Peaks. I wish you good hunting. Good hunting. Yeah, so I think this episode did just release in, that, in this uh, Living World rerun, <coughs> rerun that they're doing. So there's a lot of people running around being weird at the, where cutscenes are available in the world. My voice is starting to break here. <coughs> Years ago, I want a challenge. Um, okay. Come on, come on. Okay. In the far north, just beyond civilization, there exists an expanse of tundra overrun by Svarnir and Jormag's ice brood. It is believed that Jormag has taken up residence nearby, and that the Elder Dragon's influence corrupts all who go there. The only safe place is a Coden Sanctuary, where the Quaggan and Coden residents stubbornly refuse to give up the fight. Okay, he's telling us more about a certain map which continues the theme of Living World Season 3 of having really, really, really cool maps. Good um, hunting. So, I didn't want to say it too loudly, but the tooth... It's really something you, we use to keep the young from getting themselves killed trying to hunt Jormag. You don't believe the stories? Some do, some don't. Ace get rented from Jormag's mouth, that's true. If he could do that and still be killed by the dragon, what would scratching the tooth do? Then why do you pretend it has more weight and significance? The legend has taken on a life of its own. It's become a myth that inspires people to do better, encourages kids to behave, and lends purpose to lives. It does not mom. Disillusion need not be rushed. I see. I mean, yeah, because Norna have a bit more pride and lust for adventure and conquest. Well, not conquest, but conquest, no, but, and, uh, well. Adventure and accomplishment and folks around fighting. Oh, this guy's pretty cool. So, so natural thing for everyone to try and do is go kill Jormag. So, they'd be like, ah, I'm just gonna run north and do it, and then they all die. So, having this thing here is You realize the risk challenge, I'm sure. I know. I'm here to talk to your white bear. I'm the last of my people's storytellers. I'll be blunt. Your people are known more for their violence and warmongering than their storytelling. True, but there have been some who want it better. Okay. What is your name then? 
I am Thrun, the last ancestor of the last giant king of the Jotun. In the distant past, the majority of my people were storytellers. Later, the minority. Then, there were only a few per generation. Now, there is only one in every generation. And I'm afraid I am the last. I'll speak to Newt Whitebear for you. What do you want me to tell him? Tell him my people no longer keep our oral traditions. They don't listen anymore. But I know the Norn still respect ancient stories. I want to stay here and share the legends of the Jotun. So the Norn uh, can help us the keep them alive. Music to I'll see what he says. Wait here. Feel free to share a tale or two while I'm gone. Visitors here will find them entertaining. Well, that worked perfectly because... Oh, oh. I am Thrawn of the Jotun, and I will tell you a tale about the time before, when the Jotun ruled the world. Long, long ago, the Jotun had magic and power. They were kings of the land, respected by all races. Think twice next time you face a Jotun in battle. And remember the height from which the Jotun have fallen. If you want to hear more, talk to me. I have many tales to tell about the world, as it was in ancient times. Well, yeah, this guy showed up at the perfect time for some of the ideas of the story. Like, say, in the last episodes, we were dealing with a lot of stuff about the Mossad, the Forgotten, the Seers, the Dwarves, and the Jotun, who were also part of the, that stuff. I mentioned that quite a little bit before. And how they've all fallen so far. Years ago, were. I won the Great Hydro. <laughs> Still one of my proudest moments. Yes, from what they all were, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, my brain is done losing. And also, I was talking about the two. So, yeah, like, it's essentially proof that they can't hurt your mag. So, then, so it's like, no, 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 you gotta go train up, get to slay other things, hunt other creatures. And one day maybe you'll be able to take on your mag and no one ever, no one ever can, so no one ever goes and gets massacred, ideally. So let's talk to this guy, he might have some interesting stuff. My people have walked these mountains since before the humans came, since before the gods put limits on magic, since before the dragons slept, since the age of giants. Huh. Since before the gods put limits on magic. I didn't... This isn't... I don't know... I don't remember this dude's dialogue, so I, I'm sure I've spoken to him before, but... That's interesting. So it seems they changed how it worked. They had enough dominion over magic while they were here that they actually were able to change how other people were even capable of using magic. And we know they distributed it through bloodstones or probably ley lines or something. But changing its rules. So maybe they're able to gain dominion in specific spheres of magic in the same way that dragons can gain dominion in corrupted spheres of magic. Interesting. Tell me about the gods. Gods once favored the giants, the Jotun. They gave us magic and blessed us with knowledge of mechanical and magical things. Wait a minute. He's not talking about... He's not talking about the human gods. He's talking about something else. What? What happened? The gods threatened to take magic from us. They were afraid we would use it against them. Our confusion was great, and the Jotun kings began to fight amongst themselves. Smithing's like cooking. The more you love doing it, the better the results. I, I definitely think he is still talking about some other gods, some creatures like the Jotun worship. But this does sound similar to what the human gods did. Maybe it's more of a parallel, but it sounds more like he's talking about something else. And then? The gods became unhappy with us. They took magic away from us and handed it in measured bites to their favorite races. My people have been sliding deeper and deeper into darkness ever since. Huh. So... Hang on a second. Wait, wait, wait. So he's not talking about the human gods because they hadn't arrived yet. Supposedly. And the human gods only ever looked out for the humans. Probably not talking about the Massad because they had fucked off around this time. Um, it's possible that maybe they just wrote this law earlier and it's contradicting, but I'm just going to try and reason with this. So... Good He's talking about the Forgotten, the Dwarves, and the Seers, who Spirits also went into a decline well, later on. Well, they were they were already in decline thanks to the Elder, to the Elder Dragons, but it seems there were beings that favoured them, and it's not dragons, because the Elder Dragons had 
the, the, the Dominion there. So, what is he talking about? What uh, beings? The ring of the what anvil is music to my ears. Tell me about the arrival of humans. Maybe this will clarify some stuff because he might be talking about their gods. The humans came in boats from across the great water. At first, they kept to the shores, but then they spread across the land and into our mountains. So, he's talking about when the humans came across the water from Cantha. Uh, or maybe they were from a at that point. But essentially, humans arrived in. Like, I think the lore is they arrived in Tyria on Cantha, all the way down here, where Ender Dragons is going to be. Then they eventually set up shop their capital oh, yeah. because it was such a magically powerful place. So many, it's an intersection of a great deal of magic. My my side and the he may have also been impacting Asgard some did. of the magical potency of war because the magic was leaking back out of she it. Um, and the gods set up shop there as well. They had a bloodstone that there. Better than getting um, a trophy from a beast think, you yeah. couldn't kill. Bye. They may have put it in a volcano. Yes. I can't remember the exact I'm details sure of that, but they had a bloodstone in ore. They had the full bloodstone in ore, if I remember correctly. And then maybe they decided to put it in the cold room oh. of the Fire Island chain later. Uh, but that's what he's talking about there. They came into our mountains. What then? In the beginning, humans lived like Grawl. The gods had not yet noticed them. Their magic was primitive. Fire, earth, air, and water. My Jotun ancestors helped them to survive. What happened next? Humans collected on the high plains. Tribes became settlements. Settlements became a kingdom. And that was when the gods noticed them and betrayed the Jotun. I want to hear another story. Fascinating. So, he says, he seems to imply that the gods betrayed the Jotun for the humans. Still one of my proudest but moments. the gods that we know for the humans, they all seem, most of them seem to have been human in some capacity themselves once. So, and they get like they gained a great deal of magic, kind of like Cormier, and they ascended. So, and we know that uh, Grenth over through Doom, he was a demigod, he was born from Duena and a human, and he gained a great deal of magic. So, it's is he still talking about human gods? Did other beings favor the humans? Tell me about the dragons. Stories of ancient of the ancient time of dragons are rare, mostly forgotten. When I was young, an old Jotun came to our fire and told us about a time before the dragons slept. What was it like? The magic was wild, the dragons were merciless conquerors. They had the entire world under their talons. What happened? They went to sleep, and the surviving races rebuilt. My Jotun ancestors were the kingdoms. Giants, by the Jotun and the Norn, grew powerful. What is the age of giants? It was a time when the Norn and the Jotun would not like to see us than today. Our kingdoms were the most advanced in the entire world. We protected and defended other races. What happened? You won't understand. We had everything taken from us, and in our confusion and the betrayal, we lost all hope of ever being the great culture that we once were. What about the Norn? The Norn have come far. Their spirits of the wild returned much of their dignity, heroism, and power to them. They are what I wish the Jotun had become. Here another story. Okay, so I've now looked at all these. So, he said that the giants, and like, and he seems to refer to giants with the actual Years creatures ago, we see in the game hunt. called giants, which are much Still bigger than Jotun and Norn. He moments. seems to refer to them, Jotun and Norn, as giants altogether. So, giants seems to be more of a classification of how big they are rather than any common ancestry or anything. I assume Kodan would probably be in, like, like that general sphere or whatever. So, he said that they used to rule the world and then they were betrayed and then they fell to the Elder Dragons. He seems to be referring to the betrayal of the Mersat. Because that's the, that's the only, that's the biggest betrayal we know of from that time period. It was the, it was the Mersat, all the races, at least according to them, like to the other four. They geared up, they were going to fight the dragons together and the Mersat bailed and then they were all massacred. Although according to those Mersat tablets, the Mossad and the Forgotten were the only ones who actually mounted any significant military front and they lost because the others didn't help and then the Mossad pissed off. So there seem to be conflicting reports from this time period on who betrayed who. No. But regardless, he, they are corroborating that the Mossad like, leaving seemed to be at least one of the complete turning points, if not the turning point in the whole thing. Who knows, maybe they could have beaten them. Also, something else he said that which is very important, he said the Norn managed to regain a lot of their former dignity and power because of the spirits of the wild. Regain. 
So this is implying that the Norn, at least in some capacity, were alive and around, like in the last Elder Dragon Rising, which is something I didn't even know. Like, because I've I've talked to this guy before, but I actually haven't. Like, I don't remember his dialogue. So, seems the Norn made it, which also brings into some interesting theories of people. Some people think they're descended from the Code, and there's even been a few nods in the game to this theory. I won't go into them now, but. Maybe because he seems to use specific terms to refer to general groups, like say giants for Norn, Jotun, and the actual giants that we see. Maybe he says Norn and Coden. Maybe to him those are interchangeable. Or maybe if the Norn are descended from the Coden, then perhaps that happened earlier. Sorry for delaying the episode, but this is so on theme with what with all the stuff we're talking about right now. All right, travel to the bit of Frost Frontier. Uh, it's up here, the area I have to go to. I know it's like saying right in the center of the map, but I think it's just doing that to highlight the actual map I'm going to. Yeah. Alright. Wait, what's this waypoint called? Drakkar waypoint, huh? Uh, that's a reference to a Guild Wars 1 creature. That's the Jor champion of Jormag that turned Svanir, Jorah's brother, and created the sons of Svanir in the first place by proxy. I seek passage to the north. Then you are on the right path. But to follow it, you must take up Coda's flame. What is it? This is the very spirit of fire, as old as the world, given to my tribe by Coda the Creator for safekeeping. The fire brings balance to corruption. If that is your purpose, you must carry it to survive. I think you should listen to that bear, Commander. I'm picking up some very high readings from that fire. So it seems elements have spirits as well. Perhaps like spirits of the wild. Maybe less sentient ones though. And the spirit of fire can break that ice and take up his flame from the brazier. Yeah. Interesting. Whoa! You've definitely just picked up some ancient magic. Go now. Carry the fire into the north. My people will teach you its secrets. Speaking of ancient, we don't actually know how ancient the, the Kodan are. Because they're from further north than the Jotun even were. So they've, they've only shown up recently, so it's possible they were around during the last rising as well. Alright, let's, let's go through here. Another beautiful loading screen. I need to find someone who has seen or heard of this new abomination. Just this beautiful, oh my god, I love this map. Um, <laughs> Alright, let's get this torch. Do you know anything? Um, I have a curious question, where do these braziers come from? These braziers are gifts from Koda, the one true creator of the world. The flames provide offense against the severe cold. As long as Coda continues to deliver these braziers to us, we know we are on the right path. You also must learn to use them to your advantage. So long as you fight at our side, you are welcome to. So, I guess from Coda, the one true creator of the world. They believe Coda is at least a creator. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't mean gods in a similar concept. But could beings like Coda and Melt powers like this element of fire be that joke I was talking about? That's an idea. I was curious about the origins of the Coda, what can you tell me? Long ago, Coda, the Ancient One, founder of the Earth, keeper of the sky, formed the world. In the beginning, the spirits of the world were wild and untamed. Then one day, a bear stood up on two legs and saw that the spirits of the world were restless and chaotic. The bear could not understand the endless cycles of creation and destruction, and so the bear was the first creature to speak. And with her first words, she asked Coda, Why is this so? Coda was pleased and made an offer to the bear. If you would watch and learn, then watch and learn. One day, your offspring shall protect and guide this world's spirits. It's interesting, 
it seems that the Coden view themselves above the Norn Spirits of the Wild. Uh, what do they describe as exactly? Wild and untamed. So, the Kodan view themselves in a way of bringing order and harmony with nature, perhaps. And they view themselves as having a certain wisdom to everything they do. Because they have been sort of learning for so long. Alright, anyway, enough of that. Um, sorry, I'm sort of stopping in this video to take in so much of the lore. Uh, it's, I, I just, it's just because it's so, so, there's so much rich lore content in Living World Season 3, and I would feel, I feel it's a shame to miss it. Uh, but speaking of missing content, it's time to roll a beetle my way through this entire map. Let's go. Alright. I'm sorry. seen these things that say like the harvesting you know for this map uh, like the bloodstone stuff and the trees and um, the volcano which we're on all right oh yep code attack right here we are hello 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 uh get off the roller beetle there we go that's some of the stuff there is a oh, wait stop okay it's a uh, okay. it's from a player but it kind of fits here because it's a fog in a room too There's and I might get this vista so you can get a look at the area before I talk to the people here just to see so just kinda get what the hell's going on, at least to some extent. This is another one of the coded sanctuaries. I think one they're one of the coolest parts of Guild Wars 2. In the sense that they're these floating iceberg ships. But they don't make a lot of sense now, given that this inland sea idea seems to be steadily abandoned. So. Oh, no, it's not so obvious yet. Yeah, as we unlock this map, and also as we unlock later, later in the game, as like, see this map's up here and shit. Um, you kind of see that they... The nature of maps in Guild Wars 2 being these, like, rectangles. They have to keep any mountain ranges in the way, so the idea of this inland sea is steadily abandoned. So, which is unfortunate, because it kind of makes this idea of the uh, sanctuaries being a thing, well, not as much a thing. But, I suppose the way you could say it is this inland sea is now gone. It was there due to this huge flood and perhaps ice walls were keeping it there and eventually collapsed or something and maybe they trapped it. I don't know, it's interesting to speculate on. But I feel like it's more just in the lore there's a sea here or at least it's split that it's mountainy or something. I don't know. What's up guys? Turn back now. Right. Return from whence you came. There is no hospitality here. Oh no, fool. Even Quaggan's small eyes can see that this traveler is not lost, but on a mission. I was just trying to warn him. Quaggan knows what you were trying to do. Save another life. Commendable. But this traveler needs help, not saving. I offer my apology. Welcome to Sorrow's Eclipse. We are surrounded by corrupted creatures here. I was merely concerned for your welfare. I appreciate the concern. I am looking for strange ice brood. Have you heard of any that have changed recently? Do we dare mention it? Quaggan is hesitant. What is it? We have had reports from the bitter north of a new ice brood abomination. It defies explanation. Yes, that's exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for. How do I get to that place? You don't. The entire area is <laughs> too cold. We've lost those who strayed too close to it. We don't know whether it was the cold or the ice brood. There must be a way to protect oneself from the cold, no? Hmm. Speak with Shaman Mimi. She has much advice to give. Maybe she will know what to do. Thank you. I'm also looking for a Norn named Bram Erson. I heard he was headed this way. Quaggan has not met him, but Quaggan and Coden will ask around. If you see any Quaggan or Coden birdmates, tell them to come home, please. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the herdmates, that's just the thing we find around the map. There's some Quaggan we either told to go home or they're in a bit of a dire stress. Anyway, uh. Your courage will be tested here, Dragon Slayer. How do you know who I am? I haven't talked to you yet. 
may have also noticed that they referred to my character as a him in the dialogue. They rarely address your These character. These are dark times, friend of Quaggins. Be careful. They really address your character customization and stuff in dialogue, like your race or your gender. So it's kind of nice and like makes it a bit more personal what they do. Uh, I'm gonna drop this because we're gonna jump in below the ocean. Right, let's go. Over the edge. Let's go. Down. Let's go. Down. I don't think I've been here with the. Uh... I love quagran areas. They're just so. Like, it's just all the architecture and stuff that they do. They make things out of reeds and... Ah! This is one of my favorite ones. When I first saw this stuff in the advertising Guild Wars 2, this, it was quaggin, it was quaggin, like, houses and stuff in, like, underwater tunnels that really captured me. I'm actually... I think I know the location. It's a place... about... It's in here, I think. Yeah, Uguth. I think it's like, it's like a tunnel thing that goes in there. If I remember correctly, and it's just it, that I saw that in advertising, and I was like, I need this game. Now, you tell me everything. Ah, Quaggin is a shaman to Malogan. Quaggin knows you. Your legend has traveled far. Are you here to kill Jormag? First, I need to find one of Jormag's minions, a powerful one that isn't like the others we know. And you have heard that one exists in the coldest part of the Shiver Peaks. Yes, Wagen sees that is true. Wagen can help you, but only indirectly. You will die if you go up there without protection. In Quaggin's nightly spirit wanderings, Quaggin has seen Svanir who travel in the bitterest cold using magical protection. That sounds like what I need. Where can I find it? Your journey will be long. First, you must go to the big Svanir base and talk to them. They know. Talk to the Svanir? Is that a joke? The only way they will talk to you is if they think you are one of them. You are clever. Wagen has faith in you. I see. I think I know a way around that. May Malagin watch over you and keep you safe, Shaman. Okay. So now we have a general objective. So, this, the area they are talking about is up around here. So that area is just too cold to survive in no, like, normal living creature that's not like an ice element can survive in it, but the Svanir can because they have protection from Jormag. This is a, an important time where, to make some, a distinction between, like, there's, because there's various classifications of Ice Brood and Ice Brood allies and stuff like that. So, the Sons of Svanir are Norn, who have sided with Jormag. They're still themselves, they're completely, they're completely, they're just magic crazy and think Jormag is a spirit of the wild, or at the very least that Jormag is stronger than the spirits of the wild and therefore deserves their reverence and loyalty more than the spirits do, if that makes any sense. And the, the Norn likes to be very independent, but when it comes to the spirits, they are more, like, I don't know, whipped than they'd like to admit. And so that's how the Sons of Spania are kind of born. Uh, and they view being turned into Ice Brood as like a sort of a blessing. Now, so those are the Sons of Spania. The Spania, who have inherited the actual name Svani himself, they, like, they go by it as their classification is what they are. They're like partially converted Ice Brood who were sons of Svani. They're not full on Ice Brood yet, they're more of a hybrid. And they still have some of their agency, and they're a bit more intelligent as we'll see. And then there's full on Ice Brood, and they are just minions of Jormag, fully corrupted through and through. This is a mini destroyer here, which actually looks quite cool, and it's gone. What is, what's up here? What is this? Oh, a mini snow up, and it's leaving too. Oh. Okay. But yes, yeah, so now we have our objective. We need to go to the, to the Spania, impersonate one of them, uh, and somehow, and figure out how they survive in the cold so we can go and find that Ice Brood minion and kill it and bring us out back to time in order to figure out how we are going to possibly hit the Elder Dragons against each other. So, see you in the next one.